Hello, students, and welcome back to our third、uh, lecture on "She Stoops to Conquer," our play for the second semester. So, in this part, I will go over the prologue and、um, explain to you how the prologue is an important and what is the significance of、uh, the prologue in our play "She Stoops to Conquer." So, I took this prologue from the text of our play. If you see that this is the prologue, it's very simple and it's a very Um, let's say short. Okay. So、uh, before I go to the words here written here and then the、uh, highlighted words as well, I will、uh, give you let's say a short、uh, definition of what it meant by a prologue. So student, a prologue is kind of like a dialogue or. It's kind of like an introduction that appears at the beginning of an act of a play. So there might be one character or two characters、uh, address the audience with their speech and talk with the audience and just to let the audience know、uh, what this whole、uh, play is about. So、um, the prologue sometimes can come in the form of like a long poem. Or sometimes it comes in a verse, or sometimes it comes like in a short story.、Uh, but it, the main important thing, or let's say the main point of this、uh, prologue, is to let the audience understand,、um, let's say, or to summarize、uh, what will happen in the play. So our pro- prologue here, and she stoops to conquer. So.、Uh, The prologue in "She Stoops to Conquer" was written by David Garrick. So it was written by, okay, Ger- David Garrick, in 1717, and、uh, David Garrick he was the manager of Govan Garden's rival pay- patent house in Drury Lane. Okay, and、um, Garrick he was one of the finest actors、uh, of his day, and、um, he was a friend also of Samuel Johnson, and、um, some people said that Johnson himself is the one who kind of like persuaded David Garrick to write this、uh, a prologue. Okay, so uh, the prologue uh, was spoken by a comic actor. So there is two things: the prologue was written by David Garrick, and then it was spoken, which means at the stage, you know, staged in front of the audience. Someone, let's say, a comic actor. Uh, address the audience or speak this prologue in front of the audience. Okay, and the comic actor is called Edward Woodward. Okay, Edward Woodward. So he was the one who rejected the role of Tony Lumpkin.、Um, you know, there are a couple of roles in the play, and they assign each one of the roles to different actors. But this kind of actor, this comic actor. Edward Woodward rejected the role of Tony Lumpkin. He didn't want to perform the role, okay? Because he believed that it will, you know, the role would be a failure, okay? So、uh, this comic character he dressed in black, okay, and mourning the comic muse who lies dying. So, student, this character is、uh, holding a handkerchief in his、um, to his eyes, and he was mourning the comic muse, or he's mourning the comedy because they believe that the comedy is、um, dying. Okay. Okay. If you if we go back to the prologue, let's see here in, in the blue. Okay,、uh, in the yellow color. Uh, the comic comic muse long sick is now dying, and if she goes, my tears will never stop. For as a player, I cannot squeeze out one drop. I am undone that soul shall lose my bread. I'd rather, but that's nothing, lose my head. When the sweet maid is laid upon the bier, shudder and I'll and I shall be chief mourners here. So, 
do you see here students so this is uh, this is written in verse okay and the comic can use what he means by that because the comedy okay the laughing comedy is dying okay and then um let's come here to the main thing in the okay so the gist of the argument which means the main point of this whole uh the main point of this whole prologue is that the laughing comedy do you remember the laughing comedy okay is a dying okay and the laughing comedy used to give amusement and laughter to the audience is now dying and is being replaced by a sentimental comedy okay sentimental comedy is a really a form of a serious comedy okay it's not like uh, a laughing comedy and it involves emotional thing let's say it, dem it demands emotional uh, emotions on the spectators okay so if this type of comedy gains the stage so if the sentimental comedy is going to be performed on the stage then this actor he's talking to himself and said that Woodsworth and Woodward sorry and um, Edward himself will no longer be working they will be out of work because they cannot perform sentimental comedy they only can perform laughing a comedy okay so Woodward, uh, Woodward uh, makes an attempt so he's uh, trying to do some acts of her own sentimental comedy to see himself if he can do it so he tried to imitate a sentimental perform okay in a few lines from a sentimental comedy but he realized that he cannot do that it's not good for him because he's not let's say uh, accustomed to do such a such uh, alliance he's more related to laughing comedy okay so uh, by the end of uh, by the end of the prologue okay at the end of the prologue the speaker makes the point that the doctor okay the doctor that is Oliver Goldsmith himself the writer of the play has come to restore his ailing patients so we have a comedy and comedy is a patient and almost dying okay but it needs someone to help her to stand okay so the one who can do that is Oliver Goldsmith and he's gonna do that by giving her five potions which means five acts okay or five drafts do you see this uh students there is a lot of use of metaphor in here okay so uh, and also a personification so uh, comedy is treated as if she's a woman okay and she's so um tired and she's so sick and the one who gonna help her the doctor or let's say the physician is oliver goldsmith okay how is he gonna help her he gonna help her through five potions which means five cure okay or let's say medicine he gonna give her medicine and what he why five because she stooped to conquer is five acts dc this is corresponding to the play to the five acts of the play okay he will try to revive the comedy so uh, the prologue is presented in the form of an extended metaphor, okay? So the true comedy is the patient that is dying, okay? Dying, why? Because sentimentalism is going to be on stage, performed on a stage, okay? So Goldsmith is the physician who will restore her, and the audience later will decide whether the doctor is truly well qualified or not do you see how beautiful is this let's go to the prologue and see okay uh do you see these lines a doctor comes this night to show his skull to cheer her heart and give your muscles motion he in five droughts prepared presents a potion a kind of magic charm for be assured if you will swallow it the maid is cured do you see this 
it's very uh, important to understand these line, lines. So students, do you see that this is uh, the, the uh, prologue is very important, okay? Audiences regard both the prologue is the beginning, the speech at the beginning, and the epilogue is the end of the play. Both of these are very important to the play because the prologue is value valuable uh, opportunity to enlarge on the playwright's reason for composing his drama. So in the prologue, the actor stated already or addressed the audience why Oliver Goldsmith has written um, this uh, play in the first place. Okay? Um, usually the prologue was spoken in front of the green uh, people, uh, let's say green, pro cinnamon certains by an actor. As he finishes speaking, uh, the curtain would rise, revealing the first scene of the play. Do you see this, student? So, uh, the prologue is speaking, okay, or, or the speech is there on a stage, and then after the actor finishes his uh, prologue, then the curtain of the stage will rise, and then the first scene is now performed on the stage. So this is a typical example of a prologue. It is written in rhyming couplets, okay, of iambic pentameters, pentameters, okay, and uh, it is usual to for the performer in the play to speak the prologue, however, in this instance, the conversation was abandoned. So instead of saying the prologue in the middle of the play, it is said at the beginning of the play so that the audience realize and understand what's going on in the play. So if I ask you, a student, what is the significance of the prologue in She Stoops to Conquer, you can say that uh, the prologue is very significant because uh, it, it throws light upon uh, the nature of comedy that Goldsmith aims to write. So his main intention, Goldsmith's main intention or purpose to revive the springs of comedy. And what kind of comedy? The laughing comedy, the wit and laughter comedy. Okay, And then get rid of the dreadful sentimental comedies that was causing a true uh, damage to the, uh, let's say, a pure comic spirit. So the prologue is kind of, let's say, an advertisement to what the writer is trying to do in his apply. I hope this is a clear student. If I ask you a question, what is the significance of the prologue in our play, then you should just go over the things that I already mentioned here in the um, in the lecture. I hope this is a clear student. Uh, for the next lecture, I will go over Act 1 and Act 2 and then describe them in details and try to analyze the events in the play. Um, stay home, please, students, and be safe. Thank you.